adding a level of mapping over and above what exists today. With a slight variation of the source, our least common denominator becomes less relevant and the only option remaining is to start the process of definition and enrichment of the core master data entity, product entity in this example, with flavor. We were mentioning earlier about the fact that we are assuming what you see is what it means. In this example, if what you see is not what you mean or each group sees differently, what should be the approach? Mint? Strawberry? Mix? Looking at entity split in this case, it is better not to force fit. Creating new terminology like marketing flavor rather than flavor will reduce confusion going forward. If we really want to force fit, then we need a mandate from, from an executive or a higher up. Here's an illustration of quantitative domains that is used for analysis and reporting. As a general disclaimer, many of these techniques may or may not be new to you. Our intent, however, is to formalize them so as to make it more adoptable. This will be a two-step harmonization process. The first step is to normalize the base or unit of measure. In this example, all units are normalized to kilograms. Step two is taking the numeral part and creating ranges for it. Ranges can be changed as needed as long as the base data is atomic. Reporting on absolute numerals is asking for a change management nightmare. We are breezing through the slides here, a recap of where we are. We have covered six not so complex techniques, not very complicated. So we'll move on to the next. Here's a problem illustration from the pharmaceutical industry, which is probably not a bad idea after all the food we've been ingesting. Um, and in, in any case, we, we see a list of observations. When it comes to cross-trial analysis, the fact that the two observations, one, upper arm diastolic blood pressure and two, diastolic blood pressure are similar measurements may not be known. Similar examples in retail, insurance products, financial instruments, and sometimes organization product combinations. The harmonization technique we will use here is known as decomposition. This stipulates that decomposing the observations into valid attribute combinations will allow analysis. In this example, once we decompose into attributes, it allows for analysis of diastolic blood pressure, ignoring or including a certain aspect like position of subject. The complexity of this particular example, as well as similar examples in the following sections, is that a blood pressure measurement has different attributes than, for instance, a pulse measurement. We'll address that in a moment. Now, getting back to our earlier problem of domain splits for hierarchies, the problem statement is different. The scenario is different. But the solution is the same. The ideal solution is to assign atomic attributes at the master data entity level so that any kind of aggregation or hierarchy derivation can be done. Looking at this problem illustration, which many of us have seen more often than not, hierarchy to hierarchy management. Imagine mapping two moving parts. The easy way out is where someone doing the mapping makes assumptions for missing values. For example, in the absence of the size detail, the user may decide to use small pack or with nuts for an ingredient category. Unfortunately, this compromises accuracy, not to mention the manual effort in mapping. The same solution, decomposition, is applicable here, not by allocating attributes to the master entity, but by creating valid combinations of attributes that can then be attached 
to each level of the hierarchy. In the brand example, we created a hierarchy from the attribute decomposed. Here, we're just doing the reverse. Now we're taking the concept of decomposition further into redundancy control. Combining decomposition with uniqueness gives us some form of redundancy control as well as a way to consolidate information in an automated way. If any of you have worked with customer consolidation, you know that the solution to the problem of redundancy control and consolidation is a relatively easy one where you choose the attributes that make a customer unique and try to apply algorithms to get the consolidation going. But when it comes to other subject areas, such as products, it's not so simple, primarily because product characteristics vary tremendously by category. A shirt has different characteristics or aspects than a vase. The same concept as in observations, blood pressure having different aspects than a pulse measurement. What we have attempted here is the concept of identifying an attribute by product category to give us redundancy control while decomposing. Now, highlighted in gray are the attributes common to the product categories in our examples. Highlighted in blue are the category-specific attributes. Using this concept of decomposition with identification can enable an organization to consolidate their product masters and at the same time have a wide set of attributes and derived hierarchies on which to perform analysis. Moving on to the key customer report and the top 25 brand report, I am sure you have seen these requirements at some time or the other in your organization. Predefining the list of customers or brands for reporting purposes can be a good thing, but there are multiple schools of thought on the subject. We think it's a good thing, a good idea, as it is an effective means of harmonization in the absence of an MDM framework and it's particularly effective in the franchise business. So if 20% of your customers are responsible for 80% of your revenue, harmonize that 20%. It is likely to be easier and more maintainable. You can use this as a starting point to get the remaining customers harmonized. Now, if it takes two weeks every month to create the report, that's a different scenario. But we